As we feed our body with its daily nourishment, let us not forget that more importantly, we must feed our souls with the Word of God, the food for our souls. Be a part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. Subscribe, like, share, and tap the notification bell in order to be updated every time we have a new reflection for you. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning, Father. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate a very important feast in the church. And popularly, we call it as the Feast of the Three Kings. As I said, it is popularly called as the Feast of the Three Kings because the name of the feast today is not really Three Kings. The name of the feast that we celebrate today is the Epiphany of the Lord. And of course, I would say, it is not even the Feast of the Three Kings. Because when you say Epiphany of the Lord, the word Epiphany comes from the Greek word Epiphaneia, which actually means manifestation or revelation. What we celebrate today really is the manifestation and revelation of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. It just happened, of course, that the first persons to recognize him or to whom Jesus was manifested as the savior of the world is that the three kings. The truth of the matter, my dear friends, is that we have a lot of details about this feast which are not really found in the scriptures or not found in the Bible. They are just based on what we call as the tradition of the church. Of course, first of all, until now, Bible scholars and historians are still arguing who they really are. The Gospel of St. Matthew, which is our version that we read today, calls them as the Magi or the wise men. Some would call them actually as the kings. And the basis why they call them kings is because if you listen, for example, to the first reading today, and I would say even the second reading today, in the Old Testament, there were already prophecies in the book of Isaiah, that the, there will be kings who would adore the child that is born. Of course, we know that in the Old Testament, there's no name yet. We don't know it will be Jesus 
who will be the fulfillment of the promise of the Savior. But in the Old Testament, there is already there are prophecies already that there will be kings, in specifically in our first reading today, kings from Tarshish and all other islands would come to pay tribute before the child. And so because of, their, of those prophecies, we just say in the New Testament, it must have been kings. Some would say they were astrologers. Why astrologers? Because they can read signs. Because they follow the star. That's why until now, some would call them magi, wise men, kings, okay, or astrologers. But that's not really the point of the story. Another detail that is not also found in the scriptures, not in the Bible, only in the tradition of the church. How many of them again? Three. Again, you cannot find that in the Bible. You cannot find that in the scripture. We only say that there were three kings, magi, wise men, because, what's the reason again? If you remember, because there were three gifts. And so Bible scholars would say that, therefore, there must have been three of them because there were three gifts. But come on, let's be honest with one another. Not because there were three gifts. There were three kings, right? Because when you go to a party, for example, to a birthday party, your whole family goes to the party. How many of you? Seven. How many gifts do you bring? One. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But that's not really the point of the story, you know? That's the point of Father. Not those details. Even their names. What are the names of the three kings? Melchor, Gaspar, and Balthazar. Mind you, my dear friends, they are not only in they are not also in the scriptures. They are not found in the Bible. These details in the story are just added to the Bible story because it's difficult to tell the story without those details. You know what I mean? So the church, in order to make the story more easy to remember for teaching, especially for the little ones, they added details. But again, that does not mean, I'm not saying it's wrong, rather... Because there was a time when the veneration to the three kings became very popular that the tradition of the church just put up those de details in order for us to, in a way, appreciate the story more. But that doesn't mean it is wrong. And of course, my dear brothers and sisters, as I was telling you, those details are not really the point of the story. That's why if we argue about how many are they really, you're barking up the wrong tree. That's not the point of the story. What really are their names? They are just details added to the story in order to, for us to appreciate more the story. The most important thing, the most important detail, I would say, that we should recognize or rather notice in the story is this. That the Magi came from where? I thought you are going to say Toto. From the East. That's the most important thing that we must remember in the story about the so-called three kings. Why is that very important? Because, my dear brothers and sisters, when the Bible says that they came from the east, that tells us that they came from outside of Jerusalem. And if, of course, if you know the context of the story, you'll be shocked. What? They come from the east. For us now, when we listen to the story, it just doesn't mean anything. But for you, during the time, to know that this man came from the east, that's a little shocking and surprising. Why? Because for the Bible to tell us that the Magi came from the east, as I was saying, therefore they live beyond or outside of Jerusalem. And when you are outside of Jerusalem, what does that mean? You're outside, Father. You are? You are not a Jew. You are a pagan. Now, that should be shocking for us. Why? Because that, remember, their belief during that time, the belief of the Jews, is that the Messiah would only be for Israel. That the Messiah would only be for the Jews. In fact, in the Old Testament, as I was telling you many times already, in the Old Testament, if you go there, you will notice that the Israelites or the Jews, they cry out to God day and night, Lord, please send us the Savior. 
But when the Savior was born in Bethlehem in Judea, who were the ones searching for him? Men from the east. Non-Jews. It must have been like this. For example, you are the Jews and you believe there will be a Messiah. Day and night you have been praying for it. And then your belief is that the day that the Messiah would come, there will be a great sign in the heavens. And when you saw the star, you did not even mind it. And we, from the east, outside of Jerusalem, when we saw the star, it's like saying, Whoa, we think what they believe is true. This is different. So you believe it. You have been believing it, but when it happened, you did not recognize it. We don't believe it when we saw it. Oh, it must have been true. That's why they started journeying, looking for the child. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, as I said, what we celebrate today is the manifestation of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Underline the phrase, of the world. Not just salvation, uh, Savior, but of the world. Why? Because for the Magi to come from the East, and they be the ones, the first ones to recognize Jesus to be the Messiah, Therefore, salvation is not anymore for the Jews. Salvation is for all who recognize Jesus as the Messiah. My dear brothers and sisters, mind you that even in the Eastern Church, Epiphany is more important than Christmas Day. In fact, Epiphany is a fixed feast for them. What do I mean by that? When do we celebrate Epiphany? On the second Sunday after Christmas Day. After Christmas Day, the first Sunday, what is the feast? Holy Family. The next Sunday, Epiphany. In the Eastern Church, no. January 6, every January 6, it is the feast of the Epiphany. Because it is their Christmas. And what's the point of the Eastern Church? Because they said, you know what? No matter how many times the child will be born, if you don't recognize him as the Savior, December 25 becomes, in a way, meaningless. That's why they say that the Epiphany is the twin feast of Christmas. On Christmas Day he is born, on Epiphany he is recognized as the Savior of the world. My dear brothers and sisters, no matter how many December 25s would come in your life, if in the first place you did not recognize Jesus as the Savior, you never had any Christmas. Only those people who recognize Jesus who was born to be the Savior will truly experience Christmas. But we're talking here of people who do not believe in the Savior, Magi coming from the East. What does that mean for us now? We who already believe in Jesus as the Savior. What does that mean? The star. What are you saying, Father? My dear brothers and sisters, the people from the East, the Magi, found the Lord Jesus Christ because they were led by the star. Are you believers really of Jesus as the Savior? Then you must be a star. If you truly believe in Jesus as a Savior, you cannot not be a star. What do I mean by that? My dear brothers and sisters, the challenge for us who truly believe in Jesus who was born and born and we recognize as the Savior is to lead our brothers and sisters to Christ, to be their star. This epiphany, it's good to challenge ourselves. Can I honestly say, I believe in Jesus as the Savior because I am a star. I lead others to Christ.
thank you for partaking of the Word of God, the food for our souls, and being part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. May God bless and protect you.